Hello everyone, Raza here. In this video, I will show you how to build a custom approval form process in Power Apps. We will orchestrate the entire approval process from within Power Apps by using the form control, sending notifications to approvers, and design an approval process where an approver can pick the next approver in sequence. So let's go ahead and check it out in action. I have a SharePoint list called expense request list. Since I'm trying to design an approval process, I would like to maintain the information about the approval. And for that, I have added additional columns to my list. The first column that I have added is called approval status. It's a choice column that has three values pending, approved, and rejected. The default value I have set as pending, meaning any new expense that is created, the approval status will start from pending. I also have a person type column called approver. Here I will store the details of the current approver, approval commands, as a column of type multi lines of text. And finally, I have a column of type multi line of text called approval history. This is where I would like to store the entire history of the approval process. Whenever an expense is submitted, the first approver would be the user's manager. The manager can take the approval decision, either approve or reject, or transfer the approval to another approver. That they can do by selecting who the next approver is. Let's go ahead and build a power app that will connect to that SharePoint list. I'll start with a page design. I'll leverage the design gallery connected to SharePoint. I'll select this, creates the connection, I can put my SharePoint site URL, connect, and pick the SharePoint list. I'll click Create App. This will begin the process of creating a single screen Power App experience that will allow the user to perform full CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete against that connected expense request list. Here's the app. I can click on new. The form experience lights up, which allows me to enter the expense details. Now let's make modifications to this form experience. In the main container is where the form control is placed. Columns, I'll set to three. So this will place the columns in a three column format. I also have the option to reposition the columns of the form. I've gone ahead and done that. For the form fields, I'll go and insert a custom card. I'll use this to create a sectionated experience in the form. I'll position this card right before the approval columns, expand its width reduce its height and in this card I'll insert a label control I'll call this approval information now when the user is creating a new expense request approval status by default will be set to pending so this data card should not be visible if the form is in new mode. The approval status data card, visible property, I'll change this to my form control, which is called form one dot mode is not equal to form mode dot new. So notice the approval 
status column is hidden when the user is creating a new item. Approver. Who should be the current approver for the expense request? When a new item is being created, this should be the current user's manager. To do that, I'll go to data, add data, and use the Office 365 users connector. This connector has a function that allows me to get the manager details that I would like to store in a formula. The app object has a property called formulas. So I'll give this a name. I'll call it user manager and its value will be office 365 users dot manager v2 and it requires the ID of the current logged in user that we can get from the user function that exposes a property called entra object ID. So this will get me the current users manager information. And this is what I would like to plug in as the default value of the approver data card. To make changes to a data card, we have to first unlock the data card. And I would like to change the default property depending upon the mode of the form. I'll switch on form.mode. If the mode is formmode.new, then I would like to put the current user's manager. For now, I'll use the named formula, which is user manager. Else, I'll use this item dot approver format text. User manager, if you explore, it has gone and picked my manager information from AD, but the data card is not defaulting to my user. That's because approver is a person type column. I wrote a blog post around how to patch data to SharePoint. And in here I covered different types of SharePoint columns. And one of them is the person column. The way we set values for the person type column is as follows. So I'll simply go and copy this. Go back to my power app, approver data card, default value. Instead of user manager, I'll just paste that code, format text. Now it shows a value for the approver. It's the current logged in user itself, which is me, Reza. But I need the manager information. All I have to do, replace the user object details with the information coming from my named formula, user manager. Here I need the email. I'll use user manager dot mail. Here I need the full name, user manager dot display name. Here as well, I need the email. And if you observe the data card, it has defaulted to my manager, which is Sarah. Now this data card is something that I do not want to allow the user creating the request to change. The data card has a property called display mode. Let's change this as follows. If the mode of my form is edit, then you respect the display mode of the form else you set the display mode to view. So now I cannot change it. Approval commands should only be visible to the approver, which would be the user editing the item. So the visible property, my form dot mode is it equal to form mode dot edit. Currently it's a new form, so it's hidden. For approval history, this is where I will track the entire process of my approval. I'll unlock this card. Its default value, I would like to change as follows. If this is a new form, I would like to plug in details in the approval history around who this approval is assigned to. I'll create this demarcation. 
now gives me the current date and time use the same demarcation it's a simple string ampersand allows me to concatenate string double quotes enter to go to a new line approval assigned to the user's manager comma if it's not the new form just keep the original value format text this data card just span its width and preview current date and time approval assigned to whoever the approver is this data card is not something i would like to show to the user when they are creating or editing the item so the visible property i will set as form.mode is form mode dot view so at this point if i was to preview the app when a user clicks on a new expense request they get the expense form to fill out any mandatory fields that i've defined in my sharepoint list will be respected the approval info section will only show me the approver to begin with and please note none of the approval columns i have set as mandatory in my data source i will handle the mandatory logic later when the approver comes into picture in the app so at this point the user can submit an expense request the user can also attach files as part of the expense request and submit the request the expense request is created i can view the details of the submitted request the approval status is pending the approver is sara and the approval history has started tracking the information when we submit the form we would need to send an email notification to the approver whenever data is submitted in the form control and when it does it successfully it will trigger a property in the form control called on success this is what the current formula looks like this is where i would like to send the notification email to the approver the email should go to the approver if the approval status of the request is pending i'll use the formula if form 1 which is the name of the form in my case dot last submit meaning the last submitted instance of the form for the current logged in user session go and grab that and from here get the approval status which is a choice column so get me its value if that is equal to pending then i would like to send an email to send the email i'll go and connect to office 365 outlook so if the status is pending office 365 outlook dot send email v2 who do you want to send the email to form dot last submit dot approver that's the person type column that has the information about the current approver i'll pick the email address of that user subject expense request approval ampersand to concatenate this with form dot last submit dot title comma the body of the email here i can use html i'll start with expense request submitted by and i'll put the name of the user who submitted the expense form dot last submit dot created by dot display name will give me that info to this i'll add a line break i'll give an anchor tag i'll plug in the href later the text form dot last submit dot title and i am free to add other pieces of information right here i can also set additional attributes of the email for example the importance of this email i'll set it to high 
I'll close the send email function, close the if condition, format text. In the email, I would like to give a link for the user to come to this app. For Power Apps, the URL is apps.powerapps.com slash play slash I need the ID of the app. I'll save the app and give it a name. I'll call it my expense app. I'll make sure I publish the app. Head over to make.powerapps.com. You should see your app listed. Head over to details and copy the app ID. Back to the Power App, the link right after play slash, I'll put the ID of the app. But I also want that expense to be directly selected in the screen. And for that, I'll pass a parameter here. I'll call it ID. So question mark ID, all caps, equal to two double quotes, two ampersands, concatenating this, form dot last submit dot the ID of the item in SharePoint, which will always be unique. So the approver will get the email, they'll get this link, and there will be the parameter ID, which will give the context of the request item under approval. Now, I'll go to app formulas. Here, I would also like to read that ID parameter. So I'll create a named formula called param ID and use the function param of ID, exactly the same name as the parameter I'm passing. I'll create another formula called approval item. Now I need to get the actual item under approval. For that, I will first check to see if not is blank param ID, then go and look up my SharePoint list where ID is equal to param ID. If the parameter that's being passed is blank, then you set an empty object for this approval item, semicolon. Notice here it says incompatible types. That's because param ID, although it will be a number, param function returns it as a string. So we need to typecast this using the value function. Approval item has the context of the item if there is the ID parameter available. For the screen, there is an on visible property. Here, I would like to set the context of the selected item. Update context, item selected true. Current item, this stores the context of the current item to select in the gallery. This I will get from my named formula, which is approval item. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.